Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second day of the Speed Chess Championship 2020. Uh, but before we start the, the game um, and I will show you the pairings, uh, I would like to just tell you that um, according to the to the analytics of the of the YouTube, uh, only 22 percent of my viewers uh, are subscribers. So 78, almost 78 percent of the of the viewers are just, you know, coming, watching my my videos videos and then um, never subscribe. So if you like my videos, if you follow my content, just press subscribe, smash the bell button and uh, without further ado, let's see what happened during the second day of the Speed Chess Championship 2020. We have Magnus Carlsen uh, who's gonna play as white. Of course, everybody knows Magnus Carlsen, uh, world champion, triple world champion um, in the blitz time format, in the rapid time control format and also in the standard under time uh, format, 30 years old um, grandmaster from Norway. His actual blitz ranking 2886. Uh, he is seeded as number two in this tournament um, after Hikaru Nakamura, who has legendary 2900 ranking by FIDE in the in the blitz. That's a real uh, ranking, legendary one. Uh, it's not online or, or something. Uh, and the opponent of Magnus Carlsen is Parham Maksud. Uh, Parham is from Iran, uh, one of the best Iranian players together with um, Alireza Firuzia. Uh, for example, I will just tell you in 2016, Alireza Firuzia won the Iranian uh, championship, but then Parham won in 2017 and 2018 and, and again Alireza won in 2019. So um, definitely very strong grandmaster, but now um, he has to face Magnus Carlsen, the world champion. Um, and just I would like to mention that Parham uh, so far was playing also in the Junior uh, World Championships and then he won once um, as well. So definitely very strong opponent. Um, and uh, just for the beginning of this uh, match, because there is the match for the 90 minutes, and the players play the five minutes blitzes with one second incrementation. Then we have another 60 minutes uh, with the three minutes blitzes and one second incrementation. And then final 30 minutes, it's completely insane. Uh, we have uh, bullets, one minute and one second incrementation. And um, at the beginning um, of this match, uh, Parham did quite well. Uh, first two games were drawn, uh, so Magnus Carlsen just tried here and there um, what are the strengths of Parham, and uh, then he won one game, um, and then we had the draw again, and then Parham Maksudlu actually won another game and equalized. So definitely uh, first couple of games, I think it, it were five games where Parham did really well, um, and then deeper and deeper Magnus start to get advantage once he know his opponents. He said in the interview after that uh, it's a very very difficult uh, format because um, uh, he can get an experience uh, he has more experience in many openings so uh, once he know uh, what his opponent plays he can uh, actually improve change the style um, and the lower ranked opponent can have uh, the problems here and Magnus started to win. He had a lot of won uh, games, a uh, huge streak, and at the end he got the I think 23 um, to 5 and I would like to show you the last game. In the last game actually uh, probably you know Magnus um, always trolling in this game so especially if it's um, if it's already uh, he know that he wins the match and um, then why not to play um, bank load but a real bank load um, this time. So that's what happened and I would like to show you this game. Um, also Magnus sometimes saying that it's good if um, his opponent get a bad memories um, when playing um, against him. So this is also a psychological uh, warfare. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Magnus open with C3 and believe me or not, um, this opening already has a name and it's Saragossa opening. Um, and now black can answer um, a lot of ways, in a lot of ways. Knight F6 is the, is the most popular one, but also of course D5, E5, um, C5, F5, why not? Fighting for the center, all of these moves are known. G6, preparing to fianchetto the bishop, another B6, this is also possible, but in this position, 
Parham Maksudlu played a complete novelty. It wasn't played in the in the tournaments, at least serious tournament yet, and he played c6. Now, why this move? Um, this is the novelty in the move number one. So very interesting opening. Uh, Magnus um, sometimes played the bank load, and um, usually he doesn't play c3, of course. So uh, Parham actually anticipated that Magnus gonna go for the bank load, and now imagine how devastating it's gonna be. Uh, if you lose after you know uh, controlling the center and you still lose to Magnus, that happened to the to Wesley So um, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, definitely not um, the pleasant um, feelings and. Uh, this is why Parham, I think, in my opinion, wanted to play also a um, fun opening as well. And indeed, Magnus went for f3, we have f6 now. So the idea is to switch the king and the queen. In the past, Magnus tried to do it this way, and sometimes he still played that, um, and bring the queen, of course, to d1, and then um, the, the queen can come to e1. Uh, but, but of course, black can play um, some moves which are controlling, for example, um, a4 on h4, and this plan will not work uh, like you know in the pure fashion uh, so this time Magnus went for King f2 with the idea of the bringing King this way move the Queen and then bring the King to d1 uh, and Parham does the same so we have King f7 King e3 King e6 and here Magnus went for some interesting variation. I think we can call it retreat variation. King F2. So he going back. What is he doing? Uh, Parham King um, goes to D6. Uh, so I think that was the, the pre-move. And, and now Magnus goes to E3. So what just happened here? Uh, Magnus gave two tempi to Parham. And just, okay, because he didn't go for the control the center. So Magnus want to be at the underdog um, again. So um, we have king e3, we have king c7, king d3, and here Parham uh, should go for king um, e8 and then bring the king to d8. However, maybe he didn't trust Magnus with, with that. Uh, maybe Magnus would like to troll um, and he doesn't know if the Magnus gonna gonna follow all of this and um, this opening. So um, after queen e8, king c2, he decided to mo don't move the, the king to d8 and he played d6. Um, we have queen e1, Magnus um, follows, like, you know, like he wants to finish this um, this bank load completely. We have e6 and now king d1. Uh, so uh, what just happened? Uh, we have this phalanx of the pawns controlling all the all the squares um, in the front. Uh, so that's like some kind of the hedgehog formation. Not easy to um, to start to attack. We have knight e7 controlling it even stronger. Um, and now we have knight a3. So Magnus want to bring them the knight to the c2 square. We have knight d7. Um, Hedgehog is even uh, more dangerous now. Uh, Magnus doesn't want to attack it yet. We have knight c2, knight b6. We have d3. Magnus also uh, slowly um, advanced the pawns and in the right moment he want to play uh, e4. Uh, we have bishop d7 now. We have bishop d2 uh, and now probably c5 was the, was the way to go. Just make a space for the knight and continue. Um, this is very natural. Uh, bring the rook, maybe uh, move the king to the corner, that would be the way to go. But for some reason, Parham went for knight b to c8. So he moved the, the knight. Maybe he wanted to um, push the pawn, the b pawn, but unlikely. So this, this move is a bit strange. We have king c1 and, and only now we have c5. We have king b1, knight c6 as planned. Uh, and now Magnus strikes in the center. Uh, and here looks like Parham probably should uh, strike in the center, uh, play something like d5. Uh, maybe Magnus would go for something sharp like d4, uh, c4 was possible and at, uh, after let's say bishop f4, bishop d6, um, knight e2, d takes on e4, f takes on e4 uh, and maybe e5. Uh, that would be pretty much sharp. Uh, the king is safe, but, you know, against Magnus Carlsen, where his king is, you know, much better protected and hidden, um, Parham actually decided that king b8 uh, will be better move, especially Magnus also um, doesn't have the, the rook developed. 
So undeveloped rooks for black also doesn't mean um, much in this case. So knight e2, we have knight goes back to b6, so these moves were, were not really necessary. Um, and now Magnus strikes in the center, we have d4. a6, making a space for the king, and then um, the rook can enter to the game. Uh, we have knight e3, uh, and then king a7 as planned, and now Magnus starts the attack on the position of the king. So a4, a5 is coming, um, then knight would have to uh, retreat um, probably to c8 not really the great square this is why we have knight a5 now um, a5 of course is not possible and now b4 uh, we have knight b3 with the attack on the on the rook and before moving the rook magnus first go for his a5 move um, and of course if the rook is taken then first um, uh, the knight gonna be um, taken with the check and then um, the, another knight also um, gonna be taken uh, but now the knight can jump actually to a4 it's protected by the bishop and the queen uh, we have rook a3 and now this knight has nowhere to go but of course can be exchanged for the bishop so we have knight d2 we check queen d2 c takes on b4 a c takes on b4 and now rook c8 developing the rook and um, to the only open file so it looks like it's a pretty good game for Parham Maksudlu so far, um, but now we have d5 and uh, Parham has to decide what to do. Uh, this bishop isn't happy bishop, uh, it's watching at d6, so probably what Parham should play is something like e5 and after, uh, let's say, knight c3, exchanging um, some of the pieces, play g6 with the idea of bringing the bishop um, to the game this way. So that would be the one of the ways. However, Parham decided that... Um, opening the center will be better for his um, bishop. He heard the part of bishops. Uh, we have e takes on d5 uh, and now knight d5. So Magnus has a very nice um, outpost. This this knight is a very beautiful place. Uh, also, uh, it cannot jump, for example, to b6 because um, the knight is guarding it. So the position is uh, a little bit tricky here. We have f5 undermining the base of this beautiful outpost on, on, on d5 and now queen d4 with check. We have king b8 and knight e to c3 bringing another defender to the e4 because after f takes on e4 which was played in the game we have knight e4. So Magnus definitely doesn't want to have this ugly pawn on e4 and that would be definitely um, a weakness. We have bishop c6 now solidifying the position in the front of the king. However look at the dark squares. Dark Dark squares are really weak here and if black would like to try for example uh, somehow defend that the position uh, of the bishop is pretty much ugly and also Magnus can um, exchange for the for the knight in the, any moment he wants. Uh, so Parham has to find another way um, to continue. We have bishop c4 now and developing them the last of the pieces and, and now queen g6 attacking the pawn on g2. Now the pawn is not defended at the same time uh, pinning the knight on e4. We have g3 by Magnus and now h5. So um, with the idea of h4 and bringing the rook to the game. So this is why we have h4 blocking and now queen f5 uh, attacking um, the knight one more time. Um, and the position is, um, is a very interesting now. We have rook d1, so bringing extra uh, defender to the to the knight is overprotecting. It looks like it's not needed. Uh, however, uh, the position you will see the position is a very very interesting, and Magnus definitely sense something is is going on here. So we have rook h6. Now this rook uh, is coming this way with the idea of bringing even more pressure um, to this knight this way. Uh, we have bishop b3 now um, attacking the, the knight on the on the a4 uh, and here what Parham could go for is actually queen f3 uh, probably the strongest move in the position um, now this bishop is under attack uh, the bishop cannot take the, the knight because the, the rook is hanging so that, that could be played of course there is something like rook d3 uh, but then uh, what black can play is queen f1 uh, king a2 this knight looks like it's lost uh, but after bishop d5 opening the file for the rook um, and bishop d5 uh, black actually has a very nice move queen c1 and now if white uh, it doesn't matter what white play uh, rook a4 is one of the best moves because this 
knight actually is a is a very nasty knight especially if the rook join the game uh with the knight on the on the a4 the position can be very very dangerous and um, and now after let's say rook c2 with check a uh, king b3 uh we can have a uh, queen b1 and i hope you see that already this is a threefold repetition that would be a draw so parham has his chance actually uh, to deliver um, a draw uh, but he decided uh, to play a little bit tactical here and he played knight c5 so um he knows that he not gonna save the the knight uh, but what is the idea here so b takes on c5 obvious move by magnus carlsen and he make like you know very surprise face here we have d takes on c5 now with the attack on the on the queen the queen is under attack so queen has to be moved queen e3 and now c4 discover attack on the on the rook so as you see very nice and um, tactical idea uh, it doesn't work um in this case however um the idea is pretty much very nice so we have bishop c4 bishop a3 a uh, queen a3 and now rook d8 this knight is under attack already three pieces and um, attacks that and also this rook gonna join the attack and the way so magnus has to find how to defend them the knight this knight is pinned so we have queen d3 defending the knight for the third time and also unpinning the knight a uh, very nice idea very precise idea we have rook e6 king b2 moving from this diagonal um, and now we have rook e5 as planned but the knight on e4 actually uh, can easily move to c3 now there is no pin and also magnus offers them the exchange of the queens um, and the knight is as you, as you see defended four times and also is attacked um, the fourth time so everything is fine here um parham doesn't want to exchange the queen so we have queen f8 and now f4 attacking them the rook rook e2 e8 uh, and now we have queen d4 so now magnus counter attack he lost the initiative for the moment however after he defended the, the knight now his plan is a pretty simple a uh, queen going to b6 and now this knight gonna jump to b4 and um pick up this pawn or maybe the bishop uh, we have queen d6 by parham bringing the the defender at least to the bishop bishop b3 uh, and here the best what parham could do uh, in this position is actually bishop d5 uh, he doesn't want to exchange this bishop uh, which of course we can understand uh, because this bishop makes uh, is, a, is a great defender for example of the b7 square um, however after let's say queen d5 queen c7 uh, queen h5 uh, rook e3 uh, can be played uh, with some counter attacking chances of course white can uh, can exchange this way but still black has some counter attack the queen can come to d2 uh, but it's not easy actually to do anything here and um, white have these three pawns against the one pawn uh, so should be fine for magnus carlsen but definitely in one minute bullet uh, he would have to be very very careful however we have queen g6 so going after the g3 pawn which Magnus Carlsen said okay I'm happy uh, if you take that pawns and if you are if you want to eat the pawns uh, go for it and I have more serious moves here so we have queen b6 queen g3 knight b4 as planned now the bishop is under attack uh, and now rook c8 if rook c8 defending the bishop and uh, that would be met of course with knight um, a6 king a8 the knight can jump to the to the c7 wins the uh, exchange and white gonna have you know one extra piece uh, for example king b8 knight e8 uh bishop e8 uh, and now as you see this knight is still under attack is everything too slow queen d6 um and now after king a8 let's say knight d5 there is no knight anymore uh, also this knight can jump to the to the b6 and white has uh, one extra piece so it's of course enough to win so parham um goes for another line we have queen g2 defending the bishop this way a uh, king a3 and now rook d1 uh, we have knight a6 first before um, taking the rook we have king a8 um, and now knight c7 uh, king b8 and here is uh we can say this is the critical moment if magnus uh, can actually uh win that game or not 
uh, and actually he blundered, believe me or not, uh, he pick up the rook with the bishop. Uh, what he should play is knight d1, uh, and now this rook is under attack, so probably something like rook c8. It's better for this rook if it stays actually on the, on the 8th rank. There are some mating ideas here, so black has to be very careful, and a6 of course is very unpleasant. Rook c7, uh, a7, king a8, and that could be the, the continuation. But of course, white has um, one extra piece and it's a very difficult position already to play. So knight d1 was the way to go. However, after bishop d1, now Parham has a chance to uh, draw that game. Can you find the drawing uh, chances for Parham? Uh, try to pause the video and find how would you draw in this position against Magnus Carlsen while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? There is only one way actually uh, to draw that game and you have to find the move queen d2. Very simple tactic, um, attacking the knight and if the knight is moved then of course um, the bishop gonna be taken. So probably king b3 uh, or defending the, the knight um, another way. However, then we have rook a3, moving the rook from the 8th rank, uh, but in this case white have to fight for a draw and there is only one way for white to draw that game otherwise um white gonna be checkmated so knight a6 this is what magnus carlsen would have to play and that would be the threefold repetition so um that was the chance actually for uh parham maksudlu to to draw that game however he went for rook e1 uh, and this is actually losing move and magnus can deliver the checkmate in four so i would like you to pause the video one more time and find the four mate in four it's not difficult but it requires a bit of a uh, calculation it's the one line so this is why it's not difficult but definitely you have to see uh, a little bit from that so very nice tactical training while I enjoy my cup of tea one more time okay ready so the move which um, delivers the fourth checkmate in four is actually knight a6 with check. If the kings move to, to c8, of course, we're gonna have a checkmate. So um, there is only one move, king a8, and now queen d8, king a7, and I hope you see that already, this knight controls b5. This is very important. So now what we want to do is bring the queen to the to the a8. So king uh, queen b8 first, and and after taking the the knight, this is a checkmate. The king cannot escape this way uh, because it's controlled. The pawn, of course, control and. The queen controls all these squares, so this would be a checkmate. So congratulations if you found it. Magnus Carlsen um, didn't, uh, he played a6, and in this position, actually, time of uh, Parham Maksudlu ended, and um, he lost um, by, by the time. But of course, this is also a winning. Uh, the, the pawn cannot be taken because the pawn is pinned uh, and now a7 is coming, a8 is coming and white gonna have two queens and easily win the game. Uh, it's not possible to defend. There are no counterplay here. Um, even, even if the bishop is taken, then the queen is um, alone here and uh, yeah, white can uh, defend uh, from any attacks here. So that would be just too slow. Okay, let's say queen d2, then we're gonna have a check and then the queen gonna, you know, this is of course uh, completely uh, winning. The knight can jump, uh, defend this knight and this queen gonna come to the, to the d8 and that's gonna be game over. Uh, so yeah, but after a6, um, the time is over and Magnus Carlsen won um, the last game. And uh, here, as you see, um, these are the standings after two days. So we already know the two quarter finalists, uh, Maxim Vasil Lagraf and Magnus Carlsen. And then yeah, that's all for today. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press unlike. And if you don't want to miss other games from that tournament and other tournaments, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.